Hello, this is Channel Easy Self Host. In this video, we are going to run Paperless NGX. Paperless NGX is a document management system that helps you organize your documents in a searchable manner. And it provides integration with Scanner and OCR capability to help you transform physical documents. We are still going to use Docker Compose to run Paperless and its dependencies. And we are going to set up proxy server and HTTPS like always, whether you are running inside home network or on the public internet. In the GitHub repository of paperless NGX, we can find a few Docker Compose examples. These examples are different in their database choice and other dependencies. We are going to use the Postgres one, which uses Postgres as its database. It is composed of three services, including the paperless web server, the Postgres database, and a Redis server as a message broker. We are going to take this Docker Compose file and modify it a little bit. I am going to walk through this Docker Compose file and a directory structure that helps us organize different Docker Compose files. This Docker Compose file begins with the configuration of an external Docker network, which will connect paperless NGX web server and the proxy server. We need an external Docker network because we are going to define the proxy server in another Docker Compose file. And remember that we need to create this network manually outside Docker Compose. Next, we are going to define some Docker volumes. Docker volume is the preferred way for the container to store its persistent data. We can map them to directories inside containers. We will see in the service section how they get used. The first service is a Redis server. Redis is a memory database used as a message broker by paperless server. It's actually not necessary to persist data from Redis, but we can still store it for initialization speed. We map the Redis data volume we just specified to the data directory defined by the container. Next is the Postgres database service which stores data like document metadata and a search index. We map the PG data volume to the database directory in container. Here we also configure the database name, user, and password through environment variables. Then it's the paperless web server, which serves the web page and the APIs. Here we specify that the web server depends on the DB and the broker, so the web server won't start before the DB and the broker. We also have a health check section to tell Docker if the service is still healthy, so Docker can restart the service when it's not. In the network section, we specify two networks. The default network is for connecting services inside the same Docker Compose file. If a service only needs the default network, like the broker and the DB, it can skip the network section. The proxy net is for connecting the proxy server we are going to talk about later. In the volume section, we use two separate volumes to store data and media. They are mapped to the directories defined by the paperless container. There are some environments we need to set for the web server. Paperless Redis defines the Redis server address. The paperless DB host defines the database network hostname, and the paperless DB path defines the password for the database. The paperless URL defines the URL you plan to access the paperless server. It's for the paperless server to audit the URL it accepts. You will need to set up DNS and the proxy server for the URL to work. Then it's a secret key for the paperless server to do authentication. Please generate another random string when you are using this file. Then I'm going to talk about the file structure we use to organize Docker Compose files and other assets. In this file structure, we put each app and its dependencies in its own Docker Compose file and directory. This file structure has the benefit that you can start each app individually, but you do have to go to each directory to bring up the apps, though you can simplify this process by using a script. Then I'm going to talk about reverse proxy. I'm using Caddy as my main reverse proxy here, but there are other good choices like Nginx, Nginx Proxy Manager, traffic, and HA proxy. Here we put caddy in its own docker compose file, and we also need to declare the global docker network proxy net. We have a volume setup mostly for storing certificates. Next we have a config section, in which we include the caddy file in the same directory, and we are going to mount it in the service section. For the caddy service, we are using a modified version of caddy container that supports integration with DNS providers like Cloudflare. If you don't plan to get certificates through DNS challenge, you can use the official image. The rest of this Docker Compose file is pretty straightforward. Moving on to the caddy file. 
Here we create a scope of subdomains for all the services we are going to host. Under this scope, we define the TLS or HTTPS configuration that we are getting certificates using DNS challenge through provider Cloudflare, followed by the API token configured using environment. And that's going to be configured in the .env file. For paperless ngx, we have this section to proxy the paperless subdomain to its container. Then to configure the API token, you can simply type the token in the .env file. Before we run our proxy server, we do have to set up the DNS, mapping the subdomain to our server IP address. To run the Docker Compose files, we first need to manually create a Docker network proxy net. Then let's navigate to the directory that has the paperless Docker Compose. Here we run Docker Compose up d to bring up the paperless Docker Compose. Then let's navigate to the caddy directory and run the same command to bring up caddy. Now we can open the browser and type in the domain name we have for paperless ngx. For me, it's paperless.home.easyselfhost.com. Then we'll be prompted to the login page of the paperless. But unlike other self-hosted apps, paperless doesn't have a default login. Instead, we need to go back to the command line and run the shell inside the paperless container using the command docker exit-it paperless bash. This will launch a bash inside the container. And here we can run the following command to create a user. That is python manage.py create super user. Then you can configure the username and password of your first user. After this, you can run exit to exit the shell. And now we can go back to the web page and log in this user. Now we are in the paperless main dashboard. And we can take the tour to get familiar with this app. I'll leave that to you to explore. To showcase the usage of paperless, let's drag some files here. After the files are uploaded, you can save them in the documents. The way paperless organize your file is through tags. To do that, you can open one of your documents and navigate to the tag section. Here, you can start typing the tags you want to add. Say, I want to tag this bank statement, banking. And of course, we can add multiple tags. After this, we can simply save the document. With more tags added to our documents, we can use tags to filter the documents we need. Tags are great, but I think the most powerful feature in paperless is searching. With its ability to read tags in the files and also perform OCR on files that doesn't have tags baked in, we can simply type in keywords in the search bar and find the files we need. Paperless has more features to offer. For example, you can give it access to your email account and it can automatically import files from your inbox. Paperless does it through IMAP, so most of your webmail platforms should support this. I highly recommend you go to the Paperless website and discover more use cases there. That's all for this video. Please consider subscribing for content like this. You can find the configuration files in this video on GitHub and the link is in description below. Thank you for watching.